How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Junluka. I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada. And just a few days ago now, I was super excited because I wrote step one and then I figured out a few days ago this week that I passed the step one exam. And that's why we're here today. I wanted to get this video out to you guys now while the tips are still fresh. This is gonna be my guide to passing the step one exam for people in a hurry. And it's gonna be the first of two videos. The second one is gonna be going over like 10 last minute details that you should cram like right before the exam, but that's for later. This is the guide. That's what we're doing today. Now, just a few things that I wanna say before we get started. First of all, I understand that everyone coming into this exam is gonna be coming from a different place, different schools, different education systems in general. And this is just my experience. You could take some of it that you want, if not all of it, and then kind of just use it in how you feel about approaching this thing. If you have your own tips for the exam, I'd highly encourage you to leave them in the comment section below too, because I think they're gonna be a big help for students. And finally, if anything that I said today was helpful, consider leaving a like on the video it helps a lot now i'm going to be time stamping this entire video so feel free to jump ahead but the first thing that we're going to talk about is my own personal experience with the test and how i approached it i am a final year canadian medical student which means that our education system here is slightly different than the way they do things down in the states especially over the course of the last few years there has been a big switch from learning things that are more basic science focused to learning things that are gonna be more clinically relevant for the majority of specialties. And that's why when I talk to Canadian students and different international students, I strongly believe that if you were at an American school, you could probably even get through this um, a little bit quicker than I did and a little bit more efficient. If you come from a school that's outside of the traditional American system, you're gonna find this a little bit more difficult. And step one is a beast of an exam. There is no way around it. Now, I'm also going to assume that if you're watching this video, you probably already know about how the step one works, what they're evaluating, how it's smart. And if you don't, I'm gonna link a video up here, something that I made in the past. Now, when I studied for this exam, I studied part-time for three months. I was full-time in my clinical rotations. And at the same time, I also had to work on my residency applications. And then I had to work on my residency interviews and we didn't get any dedicated blocks to study for the American exam because I'm a Canadian student. So this entire three month plan, part-time, um, for people in a hurry. Now, the next thing that we have to talk about are resources because really there is only one resource and this is not a sponsored video. These people don't even know that I exist. I wish that they did. I reached out to try and get you guys a code in the past, but I never heard back from them. But nonetheless, the single most important resource when studying for the step one exam, in my opinion, is UWorld. And there are no questions about that at all. You get the block of questions. There are, I think, 3,600 questions. You're gonna go through them all and then you're going to do the review for them as well. So in total, one pass of UWorld if everything goes perfectly for you, could usually be around 5,000 to 6,000 questions. There are a lot and they are amazing. The, the solutions that they give you are great and when you get something wrong and it explains the answer really, really well. I also coupled UWorld with the first aid for the step one book, the actual physical book. And I personally like that. I read the entire chapter for the biochemistry section and the immunology section. And we'll talk a little bit more about why later on but I also really liked having it there to cross-reference when I got things wrong. I wouldn't recommend reading UWorld cover to cover if you are in a hurry and you are just trying to pass this exam, but I do think that it is a good resource to have when you're trying to check things over and learn it for yourself. And this is not to knock other preparation companies either. One company in particular that I've heard really great things about is Sketchy. Um, and I've used some Sketchy before in um, when I was at a hospital and one of the IMGs that were there on, a, on an elective showed me their, their version of Sketchy and I thought that it was really, really cool. I just didn't have the time. But for Microbio and for Farm and for some of those things that require a little bit more memorization, I've heard that Sketchy is good if, if you have the time to do it. Okay, so now for the plan, you've gathered all of your resources. The very first thing that you're going to do is start right away with the UWorld practice questions. You're going to do them in blocks of 40 and you are going to do them all on tutor mode, all timed, but on tutor mode. Now, the reason why, what I want you to remember about step one is that step one, at least in my opinion, is an evolution of the MCAT. It's very, very similar to when you were studying for the MCAT test. And for that reason, there are two things that you need to keep in mind when you're getting ready for step one. And that is the entirety of your score is broken down into your ability to number one, 
memorize as much as possible about all of these different systems that are going to be tested on the exam and after memorizing them applying them to the questions but it is very heavily a memorization of certain key facts that are you you're then going to use and apply to the different questions and the second thing that you're going to need to do is learn how to recognize incorrect answers and cross them off that way if you do have to guess on a question you increase your probability that you're going to get it right because if there are seven or six answer choices for example you cross off a whole bunch of them and choose the correct one now because step one is so heavily focused on memorization and application Tutor mode on the UWorld practice questions are going to allow you in large to bypass the content review section. Previously, if there was no such thing as tutor mode or in the past when you were aiming for a very, very high score, you would read through all of step one for the first aid and memorize every single crucial fact on there, reread things. But if you're just trying to pass and you're trying to pass quickly, what I would recommend instead is go through all of those questions on tutor mode. And every time you come up to an incorrect question, you stop, you read the response, and then once you know why you got it wrong, if that still sounds a little bit shady to you, that's when you break out your step one book, and you look up that particular chapter, you read it through, and then you take notes only on the things that you don't know. And it saves so much time and allows you to power through as many questions as possible while working on all these other things, and specifically focusing on the areas that you don't know and not have to waste time reading over things that you are already very confident in. One other really important piece of the puzzle here is to use free videos available on YouTube to explain a lot of the concepts that you want a little bit better of an explanation at, or some of the things that are very difficult for you to memorize by yourself are very easily explained on YouTube in some cases. And this is where I want to shout out Dirty Medicine, that channel on YouTube. Um, Dirty, thank you so much for all your help on this thing. He was amazing at explaining so many different topics and if there's something that you don't know, I would say right away, go to YouTube, see if Dirty Medicine has an explanation for it because those are some high yield videos for sure. Now, once you have the basics of that plan lined out, the, the rest is easy. What I did over the course of my three months is for three, four, five hours a night, do as many question blocks and 40 question chunks as I could back to back to back on tutor mode. I would aim for around 150, 160 questions on average per night. And then what I would do is as I got questions wrong and you will get a lot of questions wrong, UWorld will show you how many questions you've got wrong and they'll move the incorrect questions to a separate bank. Keep an ongoing tally of how many incorrect questions you have. And once you have more than 300 incorrect questions, it's at that time that you start doing blocks of 40 from your incorrect question pool. And what this does is eventually you have to go back and review and answer those questions, but let them build up a little bit so that you have time to forget what the right answer was. So when you go back and tackle them again, you won't just know that that's B because I remember that it was B, but instead you'll have a fresh shot at that question. You'll remember a little bit and hopefully it'll allow you to consolidate that information a little bit better. Another thing that I did longitudinally as I went through is that I made handwritten notes um, of anything that I thought was important in terms of mnemonics and high yield information. And I wrote them all in books. And then every 1000 questions that I had made it through, I would go back to my books and I would go over all of the mnemonics and everything that I wrote down and really just try to draw attention to the highest yield details there. Now you're going to follow this plan for the first two months. Hopefully at the end of two months, you're able to get through all of the year old questions. And hopefully you guys also are not applying to residency at the same time that you're doing all these things like I was because it got very difficult towards the end and I wasn't able to do this, but what I would recommend to you is that in the final month, what you're going to do then is do you world a second time and every maybe once a week or every five days, whatever you're comfortable with, you're going to do some form of practice exam. And this is really going to be the first exposure that you have to doing questions without the tutor period and really just um, answering many questions in a row without knowing what, how you did on those questions. But I do think that this is going to be highest yield. This is how you get everything done. In your last month, I would start with the UWorld um, practice tests. They're four hours a piece and there are two of them. It's included in your subscription. Now, after every practice test that you do, when everything's said and done, that's it. That's, that's all you do for the whole day. You do that practice test and the next day, instead of doing UWorld questions, you go back and you review all of your answers from that practice test. Why did you get things right? Why did you get things wrong? Why did you choose certain answers? It really helps you to consolidate those practice forms at the end are the highest yield things, but you're going to save them for the last month, in my opinion, um, just 
trying to get everything concise leading into the exam. So now the last part of the video are just a few tips that I want to include right at the end now, things that will make your life a lot easier and things to remember as the test day is getting closer and closer. The first thing is in your first and second years of medical school, you really should be going through the Onking Anki deck, in my opinion. Those 36,000 questions um, in the Onking deck are all very high yield. Many of those questions showed up all over my practice exams and the actual exam. And I would say over the course of two years, if you're able to get through the entire deck, it's very, very high yield. And I think that it's gonna make your life a lot easier when you're studying for stuff. The second thing that I wanna say is do not freak out. Do not get too, too worried if you are answering new world questions, especially in your first pass and you're not getting 70, 80% on the questions. I know Reddit and, and different people posting on Reddit have tended to freak out medical students a lot when it comes to this particular thing. But I remember, especially in the beginning, as I was going through UWorld, some of those 40 question blocks, especially as I started stringing them together, I'd get like 35%. 40%, 30%, sometimes you'd go backwards, right? Um, and don't let that scare you too, too much. What I will say is that my final stat at the end of going through your world was 90% completion with a 53% correct um, answer ratio. And there is a document that was created a long, long time ago. I will link it. It's also found on Reddit, but it shows you approximately where you are likely to score compared to how many of the questions you have gotten right in your first pass of your world. And I think with um, about 53% completion, I was lining up somewhere in around the 205 range or somewhere around the, the low 200s. You do only need a 196 to pass the exam. Um, so, so, you know, don't worry if you're not getting 70, 80, 90% correct. The UWorld questions are very difficult. The next tip is that the UWorld practice test, the full length, their version of the full length test, that four hour test is not predictive of your score. And I know different people have said this in the past, but the closest thing that you could get to your actual score are the full length NBME questions. Do not use UWorld practice questions as a predictor for how you're gonna do on the actual test. Both times I did the UWorld um, practice forms, um, the, the four hour tests that they have, I didn't get a passing score on either of them. And what happened was I would work the full shift that I had on emergency psychiatry that day. I came home exhausted and I sat down for four hours to do this practice score. And I think the first one I scored a 190. Um, so it was the 17th percentile. And the second one was lower than that. I went down for their form two. I got like a 176 or something like that. Both times though, I acknowledged that um, even though, you know, I got a 190 and a 176, on the percentile chart, I was ahead of the passing percentile that you need for step one. So for example, when I scored a 190, I was in the top 17th percentile. You really only need to be top fifth percentile to pass the step one uh, test. And we're trying to pass. That's what this whole guide is about. So do not freak out if you're not getting 200 on the UWorld practice test. One thing that I will say for myself is that I am very, very good at memorizing things. And when I get a question wrong, I am very unlikely to get that question wrong again in the future. And therefore the benefit of doing the UWorld practice forms was not really to see what score I was getting, but to be exposed to even more content and to memorize those answers so that on the actual test day, I will have seen something similar and I would have been able to answer those a little bit better. And finally, my last tip that I think people need to know if you are not an American student like myself is that the differences that I was able to highlight, these danger areas that are significantly more detailed on this exam than what I was previously exposed to in my own education. There's a few that I've highlighted here. Embryology, pharmacology, immunology, biochemistry, and then a section on random facts. Those are the things that I needed the most help in. And for that reason, um, that was why I went ahead and I read the full chapter on biochemistry in first aid. And I also read a lot about immunology as well. When it comes to random facts, that's where you just have to expose yourself to as much as possible. Like I think UWorld does have a question asking you about different mushroom poisons and toxins and things like that. And it's just those random facts that you cannot um, infer from the question. You cannot, it's either you know it or you don't. And it's only through exposure that if one of those questions comes up, you will have seen it before. And that's why I recommend this plan like I do. But anyways, guys, that is everything that I want to talk about for this video. That is mostly everything that I know about step one, how I passed on my first try, how I think that many people really can pass this test on their first try. 
if you are a medical student in relatively good standing. It doesn't matter how busy you are, um, if you are willing to put in a, a pretty crazy amount of work. Like I said before, um, step one is, is a really just insane test and I don't want to downplay it is what I'm saying. I made this video, this is how I studied. If you go back and look at some of my earlier vlogs, I was having a pretty rough time about it, working all day and coming home and I'd go to sleep at like three, four in the morning and have to wake up at like 6.30, so two and a half hours of sleep sometimes. Um, and it was terrible, there's, there's no way around it. But if this is something that you want to do, um, I hope these tips help you in, in some way. Um, if there's anything you want to say, if I didn't explain something well enough, I'm sorry, tried my best. Um, let me know in the comment section below, I'll answer it and we'll, we'll talk it out. Um, and best of luck. Best of luck with, with all this because I know it's difficult. Um, and we'll see you all in the next one. So everyone take care. And um, step two, studying, possibly starting soon. So more on that later.